And no wallet, no bag, and no sandals. Don't even greet anyone along the way. Whenever you enter a house, first say, may peace be with this house. If anyone there shares God's peace, then your peace will rest on that person. If not, your blessing will return to you. Remain in this house, eating and drinking whatever they set before you, for the worker deserves their pay. Don't move from house to house. Whenever you enter a city and its people welcome you, eat whatever they set before you. Heal the sick who are there and say to them, God's kingdom has come upon you. Whenever you enter a city and the people don't welcome you, go out into the streets and say, as a complaint against you, we brush off the dust of your city that has collected on our feet. But know this, God's kingdom has come to you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Matthew and Mark and Luke, what we call the synoptic gospels, they all tell us about Jesus sending his 12 apostles out on a missionary journey. It's only Luke that also tells how Jesus sent out an additional 72 of his followers. <clears throat> so why 72? Was that how many followers that he had at the time? I mean, we know from the gospel accounts that at least in the beginning, there were more than just the 12 men and a few women who followed along after him. There were a lot more, but hmm, were there 72 more? I don't know. I think we probably get a little hung up on biblical numbers sometimes when we shouldn't. And especially here, because some translations of this story say there were 72 missionaries, and some say there were 70. And you may have been reading from, uh, from a Bible that was different than the one I read this morning. So there, there is a little bit of differentiation there. But in both cases, this number seems to be in reference to Genesis chapter 10. You will find there in Genesis chapter 10 a list of the nations that covered the face of the earth after the great flood. There were 72. Or there were 70, depending on your translation. What I'm getting at is that it's possible Luke is insinuating Jesus sent out as many of his followers as he needed to to reach all the nations of the world. And that would make sense because that's one of Luke's main themes in his Jesus story and then also again in his second volume, the book of Acts. Luke tells how God's word and revelation in Christ was made known first in the region of Judea and then in Samaria and then throughout the world. Luke is concerned with the spread of the good news. So maybe he's demonstrating the movement of the gospel here when he tells us about Jesus sending out the 72. Jesus sent them out, as Luke says, to all the places that he himself intended to go. So I think, I think it's probably safe for us to read into this text that the Christ of God intends to reach out and to be shared with every person from every nation. The Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Romans, chapter 10, how can people call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone to preach to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? The intention of Jesus, at least as related to us in Luke's gospel, is to send out those who can preach, those who can bear witness to the kingdom of heaven. 
he sent them out to express both through word and through their lifestyle what it means to live within the realm of that holy kingdom or in other words what it means to live in the presence of God and Jesus sent out these followers these missionaries with very specific instructions first of all he tells them to be careful he sent them on their way with a warning that they were traveling like little lambs into a den of wolves which most of us would be a little apprehensive to go under that situation but he sends them with warning because their message that this message of God's ever-present kingdom of grace is not easily accepted and, and that seems like a strange thing but it's but it's true you see our base religious understanding about God is of a powerful judge who seeks revenge against sinful people and, and we have to we have to spiritually mature in order to understand God as humble and self-sacrificing and always forgiving. But until we're able to come into that transformative knowledge, we can be offended by it. If the crucifixion of Jesus tells any kind of tale, then obviously people can be very offended and, and even violent towards this message of grace. So Jesus warned his followers about the danger of their mission. And yet regardless of, of the danger, Jesus sent them out vulnerable and needy. He says, carry no wallet, no bag, and no sandals. I think in this way that Jesus intends to teach his followers how to, how to learn compassion and again how to teach compassion to other people. Because without any money, without any provision, these 72 missionaries are going to be very dependent on the open-handedness of complete strangers. And at the same time, they are giving these complete strangers the opportunity to serve them and to love them open-handedly. So Christ says, go vulnerably and go needy. Jesus told his missionaries that they needed to stay focused. The message they carry is urgent and, and it's important for people to, to hear. So, so they're not supposed to dally along the way. They, they need to remain centered on the work. Don't greet anyone along the way, he says. Or, or the translation in the message says, don't lauder and make small talk with everybody that you you got to love Eugene Patterson's message. They were to enter each town breathing peace and speaking peace and holding peace in their hearts. It was the greeting with which they were to meet every person they came in contact with. It was the gift they were to take into every household. And when that peace they offered was received and then returned to them, they would be blessed. But when it wasn't received, that peace still rested upon them with great blessing. That's one thing that never changes about the peace of God. Whether the other person is willing to embrace it or not, it still rests within the carrier. Jesus also instructed these followers that as they traveled from, from one village to another, they were to accept what was offered to them without any kind of complaint, whether it was a home or, or a bed or a meal or a cup of water. They weren't to ask for anything more or anything better than what was given to them. I think that's because a grateful heart is a conduit 
for opening the door to God's kingdom word. But even when this kingdom word wasn't accepted, when the door wasn't open, even when it was met with hostilities, these missionaries were to brush off that hostility just like they would brush the dust off of their sandals. And then they were simply to move on to the next town. So the instructions for the 72. Number one, be prepared for hostility. Number two, go vulnerable and needy so you can learn and teach compassion. Number three, stay focused. Number four, spread peace even when it's not returned to you. Number five, accept what's given to you with gratitude. And lastly, when the grace you offer isn't received, don't get angry. Just keep moving and refer back to the first five instructions. 2,000 years later and nothing has changed. These directives are still the best guidelines for those who are sent into the world in the name of Jesus. It's really interesting to note that Luke gives us two versions of this same story. In the first account, Jesus sends out his apostles so that they can take up and, and carry on his work. But in the second account, he seems to send out all of those who are following along beside him. So in the second version of the story, we are reminded that this work of the kingdom, th this call to proclaim God's peace and to express God's loving presence. It's not just for a selected few people. Each and every follower of Jesus has a place, an appointment, and a commission to offer God's kingdom, God's presence to the world. Jesus' proclamation about the large harvest and the shortage of, of workers. It, it really should be for every, for every loving and, and truth-seeking follower a charge to hear. We are all sent out as missionaries, in a sense, to spread God's good news and Christ. And, and, and church, no more so than then this present moment, is there a tremendous need for us to be involved in such a work? You heard the, the prayer request this morning for, for our tumultuous world. The recent tragedy in Dallas is it's a horrific symptom of the the hate-filled, violent epidemic that is raging through the nations of the world. And I believe with all of my heart that the word of God's present kingdom, this, this word that Jesus sent his followers out to proclaim, this word is the only cure for all that ails us. The death of those five police officers so brutally gunned down is a clear statement to us that we cannot save ourselves with retribution and retaliation. We can't continue to answer violence with violence and expect our actions to end in hope. If we don't want to completely obliterate ourselves and our world, then at some point, the people of this planet must learn the language of love. We must learn this language that God has spoken to us through Christ. Now is the time, then, for us to hear and to heed these instructions of Jesus. We are called to go into the world vulnerable and needy so that we can learn compassion and so that we can teach compassion. 
We have to remain focused. We have to be prepared for hostility. But we must still breathe and speak and share the blessing of peace. We should respond to every little kindness with loving gratitude so that we can hopefully open the door to God's kingdom word. And when an offer of grace isn't received, we just have to keep moving. We have to dust off any hostility that we feel, any hostility that's been aimed at us, and we have to continue to uphold these holy directives of our Lord. My word to you this morning is not lengthy, but I hope it is a word that you will hear and plant within your heart. As followers of Jesus, we are those who are sent. And we're sent with specific purpose and a most worthy goal. Christ sends us, just as he was sent, to give ourselves in love, to submit ourselves for peace, and to share with the nations of the world God's coming and present kingdom among us. May we speak and live and be that kingdom with the boldness and the tenacity and the merciful, loving grace of our Christ. In the name of the Prince of Peace who calls us, Amen and Amen. Please stand now in response to the word and let us...